It's hot, we're sweaty, and we don't want to do this job. But we're doing the job. <laughs> Here's why. Those of you who've been following us for quite some time, and if you cast your mind back, you'll remember that we had a bit of a saga with our autopilot, uh, the one that came with the boat, the original one, that gave up the ghost and it was fairly old. So we got a Raymarine guy in Turkey to replace it with a Raymarine ST6002. And it all went well until we went on the shakedown cruise and about halfway into the shakedown cruise, the autopilot died. That's what shakedown cruises are for, really. Then we took it to Marmaris to get it repaired, and the nice guy, Niall, uh, repaired it fairly quickly, and um, we reinstalled it and sailed off into the sunset and ended up in the Greek island of Eos. And then we were at anchor there for maybe 10 days, and just one day when I switched on the systems just to transmit our AIS signal, the autopilot just died all by itself. Well, not the whole autopilot, it's actually just the control head. So we sent the autopilot control head back to Marmaris with our friend Jim. And Niall hooked it up and said, nothing wrong with it, mate. There you go. So the autopilot then went from Marmaris back to Cash. Then it from Cash, Jim's son came over from the UK and he took it back to Scotland. From Scotland it was mailed to Australia because we were expecting the arrival of our son within a few months for a holiday visit. He couldn't make it, his plans changed quite dramatically. Uh, so he then mailed the autopilot from Australia to Greece where we picked it up here just before Christmas. So the autopilot's actually been around the world twice. Uh, <laughs> so now is the time to hook it up and see if it actually functions. So we've already emptied the locker, as you can see. Nice job to do on a hot day. And Baz is going to do an even nicer job, aren't you, Baz? You're going in a hole again. Well, at least this hole is a bigger hole. True. <laughs> What gets me about this whole wiring system here is that it's just been MacGyvered to hell. And to be honest with you, I don't know which bits go to which bit. All I know is that this bit goes up there to that, to that there. Which is that there. I haven't really checked any cabling, all I've done is plug the old cables back in. We're actually just going to power up all of the navigation systems for the first time in eight months. So let's see what happens. Right, get ready to put the chart plotter on. There you go. Okay. Can you see our position? Yes. It's the boat yard where we're at, not far from Limney. That's a good sign. So the autopilot control head has powered on. That's a good sign. Yeah. GPS speed, well obviously we're not moving. Depth might just come up. We have a wind direction, which is the yellow line. Uh, we have a heading or a course, which is obviously not correct because it keeps changing. I find it odd that we have no depth. Three forty-three magnetic. Three forty-seven course over ground. Yeah, maybe the uh, maybe the depth transducer needs to be in water. Let's see what happens when we push water. Something engaged. Let's push one degree.
back to standby. Some disengaged. So let's just center that rudder and go back to auto. And let's go 10 degrees. And 10 degrees back. Well, that is encouraging. Not sure why we're not getting any depth reading at the moment. I don't know whether the transponder needs to be in water to actually function. Uh, so if you know something about depth transponders, leave a message in the comment down below and tell us why we're not getting any depth. From this angle, you get a better perspective on some of the holes that need filling here. There's one right here and here and here. And although they're not very deep, they're just another purchase point for where sea life can get a hold and grow on the keel. So we're going to smooth these out as best as we can with some filler today and uh, see what it looks like. The filler we're going to be using is from the same manufacturer as the epoxy primer and the anti-foul paint so we shouldn't have any issues with the various liquids not talking nicely to each other. This is a two-part filler and it's got a pot time of around about 30 minutes in the current temperature which is around about 20 three degrees celsius never worked with this before like all of these products i'm using so we'll see how we go oh and the mix on this one is one to one i mixed up 100 grams of component a and 100 grams of component b for this epoxy filler and it did say on the tin that the um, life of it before it goes off is about 30 minutes i would suggest it's probably a little bit less than 30 minutes so uh it's probably best to mix up smaller amounts use it and then mix a fresh smaller amount and use it. Uh, I got most of the holes I wanted filled, filled to a certain extent. This is our big one where our um, uh, bilge fiberglass area is behind here. And I've left that pretty rough looking because I'm gonna have to sand that back and then put another layer on there um, to get it smooth with the surface of the keel. But all of the other little spots are all quite nicely done and whited. This product says it's also ready for sanding in about three to four hours, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to leave the sanding until tomorrow. Uh, and then, of course, I will put a final filling flattening coat on this big section here. But yeah, it's OK. Just mix it up in small amounts and use it before it goes off, because once it starts going off, it gets really, really tacky and it's hard to smooth out. So that's another stage in getting the keel prepared, over and done with. It is the following day after using the epoxy filler and it's time to break out this bad boy onto the keel because we need to smooth out the bits that were uh, a little bit rough by the time we got close to the 30 minute mark where the stuff started to go off and it was very difficult to smooth out. So lesson learned there, let's see how it goes with the sanding. A couple of days ago I put epoxy filler into some of the more obvious and larger holes on the rudder and I had some spare epoxy primer over yesterday so I just whacked it on the on the rudder and it's exposed quite a lot more things that I didn't initially see there's lots of little round holes here there and everywhere that obviously need a bit of epoxy filler in them so I'm going to tackle that today and also I'll be putting what is hopefully the final coat of epoxy filler on here and I'll let that dry and then sand it down so it's perfectly smooth and then then we can start adding more layers of epoxy primer well now I've used the epoxy filler you can get a better perspective of the little round holes that I had to fill on the rudder obviously leave that to dry overnight 24 hours and then come tomorrow and give it a sand down and then we can start with the epoxy primer layers. And learning my lesson of how quickly this epoxy filler goes off, I only mixed up half the amount that I did last time, so it was 50 grams of each. And once again, it was a rush to the fi finish line, trying to get this last bit out of the container and onto the keel uh, before it became 
so unmalleable that it would be unworkable. Anyway, what we'll probably have to do is mix up a very small amount and when it's really liquid, go over that and smooth it off after we've sanded it tomorrow. Well, here's an update on the Cutlass Bearing Saga. About a week ago, I spoke to the lady who runs the boat yard here, Evhenia, and asked her to call the Speedex Courier Service head office in Athens, and she did. And they said, oh yes, uh, okay, we've, we've got that package here. Um, the reason why it couldn't be delivered was because it didn't have a phone number attached to it, which doesn't make sense because other things have been delivered and they've had no phone number attached to them. Anyway, moving on, they said, well, can you give us your phone number, that's Evhenia's phone number, and uh, we'll send it back out to uh, Halkida and they will deliver it to Limney and they'll phone you as soon as they're ready to deliver. So that was done. Not 15 minutes later, Evhenia comes to the boat and says, oh, there's some something wrong. Speedex don't have the package, they sent it back to DHL. So we need to phone DHL. So we called DHL in Athens and they said, Oh yes, it's been returned to us from Speedex. We have it here. Um, it couldn't come because it didn't have a phone number. So we now will take your phone number and we'll send it back to Speedex and Speedex will deliver it to Limney. So that was a week ago and I was a bit surprised when it didn't turn up last Thursday or Friday, which is the usual delivery day for Speedex here. And just half an hour ago, I got an email from Tom at Exalto UK, the bearings manufacturer in the UK. He said he's just received a return a notification from DHL and the bearing had actually already been sent back to the UK. So Tom very kindly has said, look, I'm gonna get this out to you either today or tomorrow at the latest and we'll send it at no cost to you. So he now has a Fenia's phone number and that will be applied to the package. So fingers crossed, it should be a couple of days before it comes to Greece and then sometime in the next week, probably Thursday or Friday, fingers crossed, Speedex will finally deliver the cut cutlass bearing to us in the boat yard. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, can you? Anyway, I'm off for a beer now. Bye guys! Beautiful place. Yeah. James Bond here. James Bond. James Bond? Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to say a really big thank you to everyone who watches and subscribes and gives our video a thumbs up every time you watch an episode. We really do appreciate your support. So until we see you next week on Sailing ABC, stay safe and healthy.